This video outlines and then demos the process of establishing a scheduler connection between AI and two cloud-based automation solutions, Apache Airflow and Google Cloud Composer, GCC. Both use the same connector, generically labeled the Airflow type. Just like Atomic or Control-M integrations, Airflow and GCC are supported by the connector framework, which serves as a bridge between AI and the two solutions. Our general recommendation is to install the framework on a dedicated system, which is what we're going to do. The connector is first mapped to AI via configuration file. We then use this connector to create a scheduler connection via the AI web interface. DAG execution data is extracted and stored in the AI database and converted to usable AI data in the process. The entire demo will take place on Unix, since it involves a bit more than Windows, which is very straightforward. The underlying technology and method are the same. The integration is supported by the Airflow or GCC REST APIs to source the data. When setting up the connection in the web UI, we specify the Airflow or GCC API endpoints and include authentication, which can take multiple forms. We'll provide a complete rundown of all the moving parts. Once we've established that the AI configuration is working and the connection is established, we configure a connection in the AI web UI. This system connects to the Airflow or GCC REST APIs, authenticates, and acquires DAG definition and event data. We'll show the different permutations, scheduler, and authentication. Note that once in production, AI reports on both DAGs and the individual tasks they contain. For our demo, we have two local systems and the Airflow or GCC REST API. The AI server host is a system called Oracle 8, since this is an Oracle Linux system. Airflow and GCC are cloud-based, which means we connect via the API's endpoints. We have another local system called Airflow underscore con. We're going to install the connector framework on this system. Once installed, we configure the connection to the AI system in a file application.yaml which is generated and populated with a shell script and modified manually. The connector is a Unix service. We'll start it, check the log to establish that the connector framework is talking to the AI server. Then we'll head to the AI web UI and set up our connection to Airflow or GCC, which from this point forward, we'll simply call Airflow. This is the procedure. We make sure the AI is running. We install the connector as root or administrator. We download the latest version of the AI Airflow Connector package from the Broadcom download site. The package should be called AI underscore Airflow underscore Connector, a version, dot zip. We unzip it. It produces a targz file, which you gunzip and untar. Untarring produces an installation script, which you execute with the install option. Other options exist to upgrade or uninstall. Installing creates a directory slash opt slash AI dash Airflow dash Connector, which contains the package's files. The connector is installed. We configure the connector so it can communicate with the AI server. For this, we execute the configuration script and enter the appropriate values. These values will be propagated to a file application.yaml, which you find at the root of the connector directory. If the connection fails, you'll receive an error message, then you'll need to fix application.yaml manually. Execute the script with user AI-Airflow-Connector which was created with the install script and assigned as the owner of all the files. The installation creates a Unix service, which we control with the standard system CTL start, restart, enable status, and so forth. We start the connector. Then we check the log to make sure the connector is talking to AI. On Windows, you start the Windows service and set it to automatic. If you make a mistake during the configuration, you can update application.yaml manually and restart the service. We'll show the file. Finally, we add the scheduler in the AI web UI so that the connector is able to acquire event and definition data from Airflow or GCC. The command should be consistent with what we just described. Unzip the file, gunzip the package, untar the package, install the framework using the script and the install option, execute the configuration scripts, configure by entering the appropriate values which propagate to application.yaml. Start the service. Check the log for messages. Update application.yaml as needed if the initial configuration was faulty. Restart the service if you have made changes to application.yaml. Check the status of the connector. Enable the service to auto start a boot. Finally, configure the scheduler connection in the web UI. We're logged in as root on the connector host since the entire procedure should be executed with admin privileges 
on both Unix and Windows. We navigate to the package from the Broadcom download site. We unzip, gunzip, and untar. We execute the install scripts. This will create the connector package directory under slash opt. A user ai-airflow-connector is created and assigned as the owner of the entire package. The install script is executed with the install option. If you need help with options, just execute the script on its own. By executing the install scripts, we create the connector file system. The dialog informs you that you now need to run the configuration scripts with a new connector user. This dialog also tells you how to start the connector service, as well as other options like restart and checking for status. This is the file system. It contains a number of scripted procedures for the configuration of the connector, the service, and the Windows configuration bat file. We can ignore all of these except the configuration scripts. We execute this script to configure the connector. The dialog prompts for a number of values which it uses to build the application.yaml file. We run it as the connector user account. We press Enter. We have to provide the AAI server URI. Simply type in HTTP, the AAI server hostname, and the 8080 port since we're not deploying TLS. We give the connector a name as it will be known by AAI and selectable in the web UI when we create the scheduler connection. You should use a name that includes the word Airflow if you're planning on connecting multiple schedulers so that you can tell them apart. Enter the host name of the connector where you are currently installing. You can ignore this since we're not setting up TLS. If in the future you're planning on deploying TLS SSL, you'll be able to run through this procedure again and recreate an application.yaml file to secure communications between AI and the connector. We have several training offers that cover security and TLS. Then we provide the AI admin user and password so that the connector can log into AI. Our instance is still set to admin and passwords. As soon as you validate, the password is encrypted in application.yaml. Domain should be JAWS unless you're deploying with a directory service. Provide the path to the logs directory. By default, the directory is called logs and it's placed in the connector package directory. Provide sizing and rotation values. You can always adjust these later on based on data volumes processed by the connector. When you're done, the configuration script executes. The setup was successful. The dialog informs you that connectivity was enabled and that your values are saved to application.yaml. The connector is able to communicate with AI. If you get an error message, you'll need to update application.yaml manually. We'll show how to do this in a minute. You've generated the application.yaml file, a backup, and the logs directory, which is empty since you've not started the service. Let's take a look at the application.yaml file. These are the values we provided. If they're faulty or you need to update them for whatever reason, you can do so here. You'll need to restart the service after that. We use systemctl to start the connector service. This will start outputting to the log. The connector started and connected successfully to AI. It found no scheduler because you've not defined any for this particular connector. We'll do this in the web UI. We check the status of the connector.
We enable the service for auto started boots. We're now in the web UI. We need to add a scheduler connection for either Airflow or GCC. We give the scheduler connection a name. This is how it will be identified when displayed in the web UI. The scheduler type is Airflow. In the connector dropdown, we select the connector based on the application.yaml file on the connector host. This information was passed on to AI at the initial connection. We should set the time zone of the main scheduler instance so that the system is in sync. We should choose a provider, either Airflow or GCC. Based on this decision, we'll be given different options for authentication. We'll come back to this. Then we enter the URL of the REST API of the Airflow or GCC endpoint. We specify the job definition refresh times. This sets the frequency of the DAG collection and import process. You're currently set up with a once a day acquisition of DAG data. If you'd like to increase this, simply check the boxes that you need. Let's talk about the two platform options either Airflow or GCC, and their matching authentication options. When the connector sources these platforms, it has to authenticate before extracting the data. Here are the options. For Airflow, we have two. The first is a simple user and password. It's straightforward. The second is OAuth2. OAuth2 relies on a dedicated third-party authentication server you specify the server endpoint, a client's public identifier, the matching secret ID, which is only known to you, and finally the scope, which is the list of Airflow teams whose DAG jobs the connector is allowed to reach. We use scope to list the Airflow teams authorized to submit processes. When GCC is deployed, you have the option of creating service accounts. They're comparable to user accounts, but in GCC. Each service account is granted a set of permissions defined as roles. One of the roles is the right to submit DAGs. As long as a DAG is submitted in GCC under that service account, it will execute. For each service account, we have the option of downloading a key in GCC. You simply select the service account and use the key download function. This comes out as a JSON file. For our purposes, you would do this and store the key. When connecting to GCC, you upload the key so the connector can access the GCC resources accessible specifically by that user account. If you check the REST API log debug function, you'll generate a log for the REST API outputs. The projected start time period determines how far in the future you want to go in collecting forecasted jobs. The default is set to 7 days, and that's acceptable. The polling interval is set to 30 seconds by default, which is low enough to keep Airflow and AI in sync without impacting performance. As long as your configuration is accurate, the connection will be established after a few minutes. After a few minutes, AI will catch up with Airflow production and ops and DAG definition data will come in. If you want to see the connection go active and Airflow is quiet, run a DAG. This will activate the connector. Having successfully connected your Airflow instance to AI, all analytics are available to you for your Airflow instance. You can create SLAs on any DAG or task in the connected instance. You can look at both historical and predictive analytics and do business area reporting on your Airflow instance in combination with all of the other instances defined in your AI landscape. To establish with certainty that your connection is valid, check the log. Remember that each time you make a configuration change, you need to restart the connector service. Check the log after doing so. You'll see the data volumes being imported in AI. Now that you're comfortable with the Unix installation, you should have no problem setting up a connector on a Windows platform. The process is essentially the same. You're just running batch files and setting the connector window service to auto start. To start and stop, simply use the service. On Unix, if you need to uninstall, simply use the uninstall command. The same goes for an upgrade. 
Use the upgrade command and follow the instructions.